America is living with divorce dad. Hi, I'm Scott Ott, and this is Bill Whittle Now. And Bill, uh, former First Lady Michelle Obama is traveling the world right now promoting her new book. And recently at London's O2 Center in front of a crowd of some 15,000 people, she said this, and I'm gonna quote, we come from a broken family. We are a little unsettled. Sometimes you spend the weekend with divorce dad. That feels like fun, but then you get sick. This is, that is what America is going through. We are living with divorce dad. Now, Bill, um, of course, you have no idea who she's talking about, so it would be sheer speculation on your part, but what do you think she's describing there? I think she's describing not divorce dad, but stepdad, because our real fathers, our real father, according to her analogy, was a lazy, inflated, hyper-egotistical, vain, stupid, and ineffective man. And, uh, and that's why she got rid of him. <laughs> and, and who did she get rid of? Oh, I don't know. Some, I was to say he's from Chicago, some good-looking guy with, you know, big smile and... Well, as far as I know, the Obamas have been married for 27 years and continue to be so. Well, we're speaking metaphorically. Yes, if we want to use her metaphor, then that's what I would do. It's not divorce dad. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's actually stepdad. In fact, you could make a pretty compelling case that it's not even stepdad so much as it's, uh, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's foster care dad because um, mom and dad have split and, uh, and they were nothing but partiers when they were in the house and uh, did nothing but enrich themselves at the cost of us, uh, at the cost of us, t our tender childhood. And, um, and so now we're living with a uh, foster care dad who's actually kind of awesome. Well, she's describing Cer who, certainly, who certainly pays more attention to us than our real mom and dad did. She, she's describing a time in America that she says is a dark time in America. Yeah. And she says, at least during the Obama administration, there were no indictments. <laughs> No, she's right. There were no indictments. There were mountains of evidence. There was enough evidence you have to use forklifts to bring them to, to the court. But when, you, when you've managed to subvert the Justice Department, this is one of my big realizations of the Obama years, once you own the Justice Department, then you can get away with anything because it doesn't matter whether the, the, the magical um, ring of invisibility provided by the press, doesn't even matter if that fails because even if you're caught red-handed, you still won't be convicted. I, I, I just happened to catch uh, on YouTube just a day or two ago uh, an edit of what Hillary Clinton said at a press conference versus what James Comey said when he basically indicted her and then said we should indict her. And, and, and the, the, the clarity of it is, is just astonishing. And then for him to say what he said, and so we, we don't recommend uh, prosecution. Well, first of all, it's not your job. But it, 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 you, you see it for what it is. So, of course, um, there were no indictments. But you know what? That's actually not true. Um, I don't, uh, actually, I realize I'm thinking about this too literally. There were many indictments. There were years of indictments. And those indictments were in the form of record high unemployment. They were in the form of anemic economic growth. They were in the form of, of, of loss of military power and prestige. These indictments were issued pretty much daily. They were, the, the indictments were loss of individual freedom, of the power of restrained government. They were issued in the form of presidential executive orders mandating some of the most sweeping changes in American society and every single one of those was an indictment because of what actually resulted from them versus what happens when you basically negate these policies from from a uh, drunk dad who had to be kicked out of the house. Now I find it interesting how she phrased this too because when she says sometimes you spend the weekend with divorce dad and in, in Michelle Obama's words that feels like fun. Yeah. What, now, so clearly what she's saying is that there are some things that the American people are enjoying right now, but you really mm -hmm. shouldn't enjoy them because you're no. going to be sick later. So what is right. it that you think she thinks we're enjoying? Well, we're enjoying keeping more of our own money, and obviously that's bad for us. We're enjoying um, going to work in record numbers as opposed to living in a state of dis perpetual anxiety and despair dependent on... The, the smattering of food pellets that, that, um, that old dad used to uh, sprinkle on the floor for us just to keep us barely alive, that and some water. 
Um, and so certainly uh, being independent of the government and being responsible for your own life is a, is a nightmare that we're going to wake up from for sure. And what she's basically doing, Scott, is, is she's admitting the failure of, of not only of the Obama administration, but her entire philosophy and the philosophy of Nancy Pelosi and all the rest. When she says America's having a good time right now, what she really means is America's having a good time right now. <laughs> well, you know, she does say it's not all uh, darkness and gloom because she said there is because, hope. No, no, because, because of her. Well, because there is there hope is for hope. the future. No, well, yeah, she's, yeah. Hope she's and more, change. Hope and change for the future. She, she, uh, she offers this hope that no matter how bad things seem to be, no matter how much trepidation and anxiety there seems to be not only in America but in the whole world, she wants to remind people that America did vote for Barack Obama twice. And she uses this phrase, which I think that you would uh, benefit from having engraved on a, on a bronze plaque and placed somewhere near the White House. He was somebody, meaning Barack Obama, he was somebody who people thought was smart and would do the right thing. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I don't want that on a plaque. I want that engraved in granite the size of the Washington Monument. I, that's precisely it, 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 she couldn't she but you know stop clock tw you know twice a day but she could not have picked a more perfect epitaph for, for Barack Obama's presidency that's precisely correct read it to me again um, he was somebody who people thought was smart and would do the right thing right and, and that's <laughs> yes that's exactly what he is. Now it seems he's to me a person that, as that the people wife thought he's a person that people thought was smart and would do the right thing, but didn't. She didn't say he was a smart man who did the right thing. She said she spoke the truth by accident. She didn't say that Barack Obama was a smart man who did the right thing. She said that Barack Obama was a man that people thought were smart and would do the right thing. Meaning the, the, the mere fact that you have to stay that, well, people thought he was smart and did the right thing. It's kind of like at least they thought he was smart and did the right thing, but they're not so smart. They're not so smart now that they don't like the fact that they're going to work and getting bigger paychecks and all the rest of the stuff. And, and now, that, now that the smart man who did the right thing is gone, so is ISIS and so is uh, North Korea as a nuclear threat and so is, and so is all of this uh, record unemployment for the minorities that she and he and everybody else on the left bleats about and constantly talks about how much they care about. Everybody's having a good time with divorce dad now and everybody is learning how to be an adult with divorce dad now. And divorce dad is letting the kids go ride bicycles uh, and stay out after dark and he's and he's letting them he's letting them go camping and he's and he's um, giving them a chance to uh, you know drive a car and all of the other things that an actual real parent should do which is basically get the hell out of the way of these children and let them become adults teach them how to become adults so yes I can understand how to a nanny state uh, uh, elitist snob like Barack and Michelle Obama, neither one of which particularly impressed me with intellectual uh, uh, magnificence or or moral example. Um, yeah, of course they're upset. They're upset because they're spoiled, rotten kids who did nothing but yell and scream at home and stamp their feet all the time and talk about how, how much they wanted an ice cream cone are now actually having a good time roaming around, making friends, becoming independent, making some money, and that doesn't look good on the record of original mom and pop. And as far as uh, the dark times go, I would just say that um, if you look at the presidential portraits, the official presidential portraits of everybody up to Barack Obama, you will see 43 oil paintings set in either the either in the White House or, or or in some sort of a national almost almost all of them virtually set in the in the White House. And then you will see Barack Obama's painting, which is which is him sitting in a chair in the middle of a jungle print that looks like a kind of a Where's Obama book for, for little tiny kids. And the reason I say that is because because Barack Obama had to make his portrait so different than any other American president's portrait, because he was so different than every other American president. Well, Bill, because it, being, in other words, in other words, being president of the United States wasn't good enough for him. Being one of the 45 extant presidents of the United States was not enough for him. He had to make sure that when you looked at the visitor gallery, you would notice something about him. And you know what that thing is, Scott? You want to know what, what it, it, he, he made that portrait there to make sure that you would notice? You do want to know tell, what it is? Do tell. He's half black. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, it's no, true. I, I think, Bill, that uh, you're misjudging that painting. And uh, Am because I? Barack Obama was continually putting his administration in the context of the previous administration, it only seems right that he would portray himself as surrounded by bushes. <laughs> well played, Scotty. Yeah. So and grass. <laughs> so And weed. Um, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Continue. I will say that, that Michelle Obama, first of all, didn't mention uh, President Trump by name. And secondly, she, didn't. she was not, uh, she didn't go after him in an unbridled, vicious manner. Here's an example for, uh, for one where you can see that she kind of held back from the strongest um, criticism that she could offer. She says this. Yes, we are in a low, but we have been lower. We have had tougher times. We were times. lower just, just four or five years ago. We were much lower. We have had tougher times and we have had more to fear. We have lived through slavery, the Holocaust, and segregation. We've always come out at the other end better and stronger. So as you can see, despite, she's not despite being Despite her best efforts. Be. She compares Trump not unfavorably to the Holocaust, segregation, and slavery. <laughs> yeah. Well, Michelle, here's a, just a little tip, which I know you're not going to pay any attention to. It's a privilege being the first lady of the United States. You didn't get there on your own. Nobody voted for Barack Obama because of you. Uh, it's a privilege. And one of, the, one of the concomitant responsibilities with that privilege is to act in a, in a fashion uh, that, that is um, appropriate to the office of the President of the United States and, and, the, uh, and the institution of being the First Lady. I know your husband has already destroyed this example, but up until the arrival of you two, it was considered exceedingly bad taste and bad for the country for former presidents to constantly be speaking out about what the current president is doing. Every president of the United States prior to you two had the class and the elegance and the love of country to keep their mouths shut when they got out of office because they understand that for a former president to take a position against the sitting president is to undermine his presidency. And this is something that George Bush and Laura Bush particularly were incredibly scrupulous about. It was a, it was a courtesy extended to the Obamas that should have been extended to the Obamas, that was owed to the Obamas, but which they are not repaying back in any way whatsoever. So. What it means is, is that Barack Obama's presidency is a failure. We all know it's a failure. The economic viewpoint, the military position around the world, America's relative strength and so on. It, the failure of Obama's eight years in office is evident. And what Obama is doing now, and Michelle as well, is they're making sure that their post office reputations are as tarnished as the ones they had when they were actually in the White House. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this show comes to you courtesy of the members at BillWhittle.com who make everything we do here possible. If you'd like to join that team, it's easy to do. Just go to BillWhittle.com and click that Become a Member link. Um, they have made financial contributions ranging from about 10 bucks up to about 50 bucks a month, or sometimes people pay by the year to do that. Uh, we invite you to join their ranks as people are every day in growing numbers. We thank you for watching this. And in particular, we want to thank the members at BillWhittle.com for making it happen. So for Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thank you very much.